Klee was the second five-star character ever to be released in Genshin Impact. Everyone originally considered her a power crept version of the current best DPS in the game, Dilu. Uh, it's hilarious how poorly that sentiment has aged. A lot of people now think that Klee is old and bad, but I'm here to tell you that Klee is way better than you think she is, and we're gonna talk about exactly why and how that you can get the most out of her and if she's right for your account. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Klee is an on-field DPS with extremely high multipliers, extremely high elemental application, and some really interesting interactions that make her unique. Because she applies so much pyro, as opposed to most pyro carries, she is best played in non-reaction teams, or more recently, with Dendro in Virgin teams. A lot of people don't like her because they think because of her child model in combination with complex animation councils it makes her very hard to play, but there's actually some misconception there, so let's talk about it, but first we're gonna start with her teams. First team we're gonna go over is Klee's Mono Pyro team, which is gonna consist of Bennett, Zhang Lang, and Kazua. You can switch out Kazua for Jean and single target if you just really want to use Jean with Klee because of lore. And you can use Sucrose if you don't have Kazua, preferably if you have C6 Sucrose. However, neither of them will be even close to what Kazua provides on this team. Kazua's elemental damage bonus, along with his superior grouping, makes this team a one of the best AoE teams in the game, and especially the synergies between this, this entire team is really, really big. Bennett provides buffing both to Klee and to Zhang Ling, battery for Zhang Ling, and to some extent Klee, although she doesn't particularly need a battery. Uh, Klee herself actually is a bit of a battery for this team, especially for Zhang Ling, as she actually has an energy regeneration passive, similar to how Raiden Shogun's energy regen passive works, except it's only for pyro characters and not quite as powerful. But it still really, really matters in terms of having smooth rotations with your Zhang Ling and absolutely contributes to better DPS overall on the team. I'll talk more about this later on, but Klee's kit also allows her to play without a shielder if you know what you're doing properly, as her charge attacks have really high stagger uh, ability to knock enemies back, and combined with the healing from Bennett, you shouldn't need a another defensive option on this team, although if you do, you can also use Zhang Li if you're playing against bosses or enemies that do a ton of damage to you. As far as how well this mono pyro team does, it does a lot better than you think. It's one of the best teams in AoE and it actually has respectable performance in single target, very similar to how Mono Geo performs in single target, which is not too shabby at all. It's absolutely enough to, to full star the current abyss and or all, all, the, all the recent current abysses, even at their increased power level. So you can get Klee, if you love Klee, you can get her knowing that she has the power to full star any abyss, whether it's single target or AOE, and you're gonna have a really, really powerful team. And you might hear this and be like, oh my gosh, now I wanna get Klee for my mono pyro team. Well, hold your horses, because Klee is not actually the best slot for this team, because you can replace her with someone like Child. And this will, and this team single target performance is not bad either. And it's probably one of the best teams, if not the best team, probably top two um, for AOE teams in the game. The one downside of this team is that it's much harder to play. Klee is much easier to play. But all this to say that, you know, Klee isn't a character that you should go for to make your account stronger, but she's much stronger than people say she is if you just want to go for her because you want to play because you want to play Klee. She's someone that will contribute to your account and will contribute big damage to this team. Next team we want to talk about is Burgeon. The non-negotiable slots are Nahida and Sing Cho, and the final slot will be one of these three defensive options. Sing Cho is going to provide plenty of Hydro application to react to Nahida's Dendro to get lots of blooms, and Klee will be blowing them up. So it's pretty on brand for, for Klee, which is really, really cute. And then you definitely need one of these three defensive options. Baiju for just that superior Dendro healing and further Dendro application. Kirara providing increased resistance against the cores exploding. And Zhongli just having the beefiest shield in the game. Plus resistance shred for Hydro, Dendro, and Pyro, which you'll be getting some of all those damages on the team. So Klee Burgeon, a really good choice. It's not strictly better than Klee Mono Pyro, but it does have it, but it is nice to have that option if, for example, you want to use these characters on the other side, or if you need this for, for certain elemental checks. The other nice thing is that because Klee is proccing the Burgeons from on field, she can actually take advantage of Nahida's buff, unlike someone like Toma, and she can build full EM because she does not rely on her burst for this team. And so she she can actually go full EM, which means you're going to be getting 
probably the peak burgeon damage of any team in the game. You can also run her on a damage build with some EM, and that could be really good as well. Klee Vape or Double Hydro Klee generally just isn't advisable because Klee just does not vaporize a large percentage of her damage. She has ICD on her attacks, and generally there's just better characters you could be running in the first slot. Even for single target, this is probably not Klee's best team. Her single target is actually really solid with Mono Pyro. You're better off just going Mono Pyro rather than trying to force her into a vape team. Just use someone else on the vape team. And basically the same can be said for Melt. Um, generally, this is what you'd be running for Melt. Maybe this. But generally, it's just not advisable because, again, the damage is just going to be higher with the Mono Pyro. And I generally don't recommend Melt. It is something you can do if you just want to use Rosaria with Klee for whatever reason. You just like those characters or Kaya with Kaya with Klee for lore reasons again. Um, that's totally fine. But it's generally not. It's, it's not her optimal team. And you can definitely try it. And if it's working for you, then great. And then if it's, you start to struggle on higher floors of the Abyss, then you can switch back to Mono Pyro. But you can definitely have fun with it for the overworld, for some lower floors of the Abyss, or if you're heavily invested, you can definitely, definitely try it on floor 12 too. So now that we've gone through her teams, let's talk about what she's good at and what she's not so good at. So Klee has really high multipliers and her damage is spread pretty evenly across her normals or really her charge attacks, her skill and her burst. And despite what people say, she's actually pretty easy to play because although she does have some complex animation cancels, those aren't even often her most optimal way to play her. You can really play her just by doing normal, normal charge attack or normal charge attack. You don't generally want to spam charge attack because because she's a catalyst character, it does take a lot of stamina. But just by using those simple combos and attacking a lot, staggering the enemies back, you're pretty much going to be getting all the damage you need. You generally want to open the rotation with your burst and then go into using your skills and normal, normal charge attack. As you go, you can learn some other animation cancels, but really they're not necessary even for Klee's top clears and top teams. So that's just one misconception that I wanted to clear the air of. She's not as hard to play as people say she is. The other pro I think she has is her versatility. Her mono pyro team, unless unless they're immune to pyro damage, she can pretty much take on any content, whether it's single target content or AOE content. And if they are immune to pyro damage, you can always bust out the Virgin team, which does primarily dendro damage. So she really has the ability to clear any sort of content. For her cons, I would say the biggest one is that she is a child model. So she is, and she is also a Catalyst user. So what that means is she's gonna have the squishiest HP that, ch that Catalysts often do. And being a child model, she's also the slowest and most difficult to dodge and position with. So some people really might not enjoy that play style. So if that's you, you definitely wanna spend a lot of time in her trial trying to figure out if she's someone that you actually are going to have fun playing with because even if you like the character you want to make sure you have fun playing with her as well and in addition to that her value as a character is kind of low but that's the case for most five stars because very few five stars are actually part of the dps ceiling of a team and i don't recommend you wish for characters based on the dps ceiling of a team I recommend that you go for characters that you like and build teams around them. So Klee is a character that you like and build a team around her, but she's not a character that you would get for other characters that are your favorites, if that makes sense. So certain characters like Kazuha, Yelan, Nahida, those are characters that you get to support potentially your favorite character, whereas Klee is a character that you need to get others to support her. So for example, Kazuha. Which is another con that if you really want Klee, you know, Kazuha is, Banner is just about ending right now. And you generally really, really want Kazuha for Klee. And so if you're in the position of going either or, it's going to be pretty tough. With Kazuha obviously being the much better pull for most people. Like if you, and if you don't have Kazuha, then Klee is not a very good pull. But at least you can use Klee on the Burgeon team if you have one of those defensive units and Nahida. So now that we've talked about her pros and cons, let's get into how to build her. So the first question is, do you want to level 90 this character? And the answer is, if you want to use her in Burgeon teams, you absolutely want to level 90 her. Going from 80 to 90 in Burgeon or Hyper Bloom teams for your trigger is about a 30% increase in damage from that reaction, which is a crazy high amount. If you're not going for Burgeon, you can absolutely get away with just going for level 80, probably get that ascension so that you can start level 9-ing her talents and getting that extra crit. For her talents, you want to focus on her normal attack and skill with her burst trailing just behind, but they're all pretty equal, not too far apart. Again, your basic combos are going to be utilizing. I would shoot for 
888 if you're if you're a bit on a budget and absolutely going 998 for your normal attack and skill for nine and burst on eight if you kind of want to min max crowns are generally only worth it for just really showing your dedication or if you've kind of run out of characters to build and now you're just looking for those other upgrades but i would definitely be definitely generally want to focus on other things before getting all the way up to crown for weapons her best choices are generally her best free to play choice if you've been lucky on the gotcha or if you've been playing for a long time is going to be the wid seth at high refine if you've been if you've been fortunate enough to get or unfortunate depending on how you look at it to get a uh, standard banner catalyst either one of these are going to be really good whether they're better or worse than the wid seth depends the wid seth is an rng buff to get to get the damage bonus which is by far the best buff the attack one's not nearly as good it's an okay stat stick regardless so it's totally fine to use if you happen to have the Kagura's Verity, it's pretty good too. It's definitely not worth wishing on the weapon banner for for this for this weapon. This current weapon banner is not looking very good, so you definitely want to stick to um, just the Wid Sith if you have it. And then if you happen to get these from the standard banner, they're a more their their ceiling is not as high as the Wid Sith, but they're more consistent. So you can go for one of these, especially the Lost Prayer, since you can take use of his passive pretty well and the skyward atlas generally being a bit redundant because she also uses bennett so you're not getting as much from the attack but it's still a solid stat stick better than the other four star options if you're using a virgin team you can still use any of these weapons if you don't want if you don't have one of these weapons or if you're using them somewhere else um, but you can also you can kind of go full em for your artifacts and weapons on virgin or you can you can still focus on her damage with just some EM, maybe an EM Sands or something like that. And you can go with an EM weapon. For other options, if you don't have one of these four options above, you kind of have to be shielded to take advantage of the memory of dust. The Solar Pearl really only buffs normal attack, so it's not super, super good for her. The Mappa Mare is an okay free-to-play choice if you're early on and you still don't have um, any gotcha weapons. If you've pl been playing for so long that you have the Dodoko Tails, you probably don't need this guide video. <laughs> but it does work okay on her. Again, being attack percent is still not that great synergy with Bennett. And the Black Cliff Agate, I think, is probably a pretty underrated weapon as it is a crit stat stick. And she generally is used in AoE, so she will get some use out of the passive. But I really don't recommend buying it from the shop because it's just a generally a waste of star glitter that i'd much rather you see use on pulls or if you're lacking on sing cho or bennett Con bennett copies you can get one copy of them from the shop i would generally just much more value pulls over getting this from the shop but it is a decent option if you happen to have already bought it for artifacts there's generally two main roads you can go down a, a two-piece two-piece for regular team for mono pyro team or any of the other teams we talked about like them like or if you happen to have spent forever in the crimson witch domain and you ended up with a cracked out lava walker that is really really good in mono pyro it's technically very slightly better than two-piece two-piece but i highly do not recommend farming for this as it's very very a restrictive set and just going for a two-piece two-piece you're almost definitely going to have a better two-piece two-piece you generally want to go for two for always go for the two-piece damage bonus pyro damage bonus with the crimson witch and then whatever pairing of two-piece attack you have you want to go with that as well just to get the best substats possible you want to go attack for her sands pyro damage bonus for her goblet and crit for her um for her circlet whatever crit rate or crit damage whatever will get you closest to that one to two ratio if you're going for burgeon again you can build either crit or full em 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 in an ideal world you get full em 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 and you build for crit or maybe go damage bonus but it's that's it's super min maxi so generally you just for burgeon you just, just go full em paradise lost is gonna be your highest damaging option but the Gilded Dreams is going to be really, really close, and two-piece EM EM is not bad either. For Constellations, her second Constellation is pretty decent, and her fourth Constellation is also pretty decent. Constellation 2 being relatively similar to Raiden's, which is kind of funny, because her passive is also similar to Raiden's, uh, but it decreases the opponent's defense by 23% for 10 seconds. So it's generally a pretty solid team DPS increase. And then C4 giving her a bigger nuke for her burst whenever she switches out. Generally a good stopping point if you're really, really dedicated to you can just go for the C2, but Klee is completely good enough at C0 to full clear, full star the entire game. So I definitely don't recommend going for constellations on Klee. Personally, I'll just be getting C0, and that's that. And speaking of C0, let's talk about how strong she feels, where she is in the meta, and how valuable she is as a pull. For value, we've kind of already talked about it realistically. 
She's just a character that you get if you want to go for her and you do not feel bad about going for her. She's much stronger than people say, but you should definitely not get her because she's strong. I just want to I want to stress that because you already have Zhang Ling, Bennett, Kazua if you have her best team and you can pretty much put anyone there, right? You can you can put Jin Yan in this last slot, you can put Daya in this last slot and they will perform really really well also enough to full star the abyss. So definitely don't go for Klee just because she's strong. She is one of those if you like her get her and she'll be strong and if you don't like her don't get her you will not miss out on anything and it's great to have most of the characters in Genshin Impact be this way because you don't want to feel pressured to get every single character and Klee is perfect for that how she feels to play the jury's still out for me because I don't have her yet I will be getting her as soon as she reruns on this rerun yeah Jello Impact we build and test every single character so definitely subscribe if you want to see that maybe I'll even make a follow-up to this video to see if everything I got right I did a ton of research for this video to make sure that that I got you the best information possible, but nothing beats your own personal experience. And that's why I started this channel because I wanted to just get every single character and build them all on one account so that I could test and give you one person's opinion who's played every character to be able to compare and, and give you that. So, you know, I'll, I'll let you know how strong she feels and how she feels to play after this, after I get her. Um, subscribe if you wanna see that video. For future prospects, what I could see changing is maybe if we get another off-field pyro character that she can that she can battery. It's been a long time since we've got an off-field pyro character. Zhang Ling is still realistically our only one, and Bennett's still our only buffer. I, I it's hard for me to imagine them ever replacing Bennett, but I mean they did make Kazua as a pretty similar character to Sucrose, and Yolan as a pretty similar character to Singcho. So I could definitely see them build it, making a five-star Bennett and Shang Ling. It's just, it's hard to imagine though, especially if if you think about using both Bennett's at the same team or both Shang Ling's on the same team, it, it's hard to imagine. But if we do get something like that, then that could give Klee more toys to play with. An AOE Hydro character um, to replace Sing Cho in this in the virgin team could also increase virgin blooms so maybe a focal lords is an off-field sing cho that doesn't that can do an aoe hydro app and you get even more virgins i could see that increasing her virgin damage team so i would say those are the main things that i could see for future prospects for overworld and aesthetic clea has pros and cons for the overworld being a child model she's not that good for running climbing etc but her kit doesn't require her burst and so she doesn't she's not er hungry and you can just go around hitting things with her and she can sit she it's not as required to choose specific teammates when you're just fighting in the overworld and so you can use a lot of different teams with her and she'll she'll be a great character for getting you through the overworld and getting you through the main story and for her design it, she has one of the more simplistic designs i'm personally not as much a fan of the child designs but she is really really cute she's getting a new skin it looks nice it's not my favorite design but i love her voice lines she's so super super cute and i am really really excited to get her and also all my gameplay has been from other creators on youtube and i've linked them all in the description and in the pinned comment please go click on their videos and give them a like on each of those videos i would really really appreciate that super big shout out to jamie kb9v this clee guide is absolutely incredible it is an hour and 15 minutes long so if you really want to know absolutely everything about clee definitely check that out i learned a lot and i'll definitely ref be referring to it again once i get clee myself so Thanks a lot to Jamie. If you want to see how strong I actually think he, she is and where she, she is on a tier list, make sure you check out this video here. Bye for now.